Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're focusing on the front end. Most of the major work is done. There's still some more projects to be done, but we're really getting close to being done as far as getting out and just driving it more than we are working on it, which would be nice for a change. This time we're going to be taking a look at the front end and we're going to update things. Um, a lot of guys, when they update the front end of their truck, they change it from a Cheyenne to a Silverado. Granted, it has a little sleeker look. It's got the composite headlights or four headlights. It looks nice, but it's a Cheyenne, and I like the Cheyenne. Besides, Cheyennes had the glass headlamps. Now, the early Silverados that had the four headlights, they were glass. But when they went to the one piece, that was a composite plastic. I really like the glass headlights. Let's take a little closer look. I'll show you what the real condition of this one is. It doesn't look bad from about 20 or 25 feet, but when you get up closer to it, it needs a little work. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, this is the driver's side. As you can see, the paint on the grill, it's, it's pretty worn. Uh, there is, there's no broken plastic on it. I mean, it's all intact, but it really does look worn. Uh, these turn signal lights down here, I'm missing a screw. Uh, they're, they're clear. I really don't like that look. Uh, I prefer a factory appearance. And the lights themselves, you can see this one. It looks like it's taken a rock. It's broken it. Passenger side looks better, but I don't know how old it is. And the trim isn't fitting well up here, so something's not quite right there. And it's got a similar clear turn signal we don't like. Again, you can see the paint's just coming off of it. It's just worn off. So you can see the Chevy emblem is actually in pretty good shape. Uh, this front end may not be original. Obviously, some of the lights aren't. So maybe the grill has been replaced as well. I'm not sure. But there are some, some imperfections in it. And it looks kind of cloudy as well. So rather than replace it, we're going to cover it. Uh, I think it'll look nice. We're going to do that in black. And the reason I'm going to try covering it, and hopefully that'll work out. I've never done that before, is because the new ones are pretty expensive. Anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks. Uh, also, when you buy, or if you buy an aftermarket grill, uh, notice the shape of the grill itself where the emblem mounts. Uh, this has a top piece with a little lip on it. And I've noticed that some on eBay or other places do not have this. They just have a little mounting rectangular spot right in here. So I wanted to find one that was as close to this as possible. Let's check out the new parts. And here's what the new parts look like. New Sylvania lights, turn signals side markers and we'll have new bulbs as well there'll be links to all the parts i purchased in the description below so check that out also if you like what you're seeing please give us a thumbs up and subscribe all it takes on removing the grill is a seven millimeter nut driver and a trim tool at least in my case. Some of these things may have been changed over the years. People could have done stuff to this years ago. Who knows? But at least that's what I need to, to take mine apart. And the grill is free. In my case, I had two screws left and right of the latch. Two at the very end. One above the emblem. One below at the bottom. Then behind each turn signal. There was another screw. Okay, here's a comparison of the two grills. Man, that new one looks nice compared to the original, or at least the old one. Uh, you'll notice that uh, when we pulled the old grill, this piece of painted trim is still attached to the bottom. We'll have to relieve that. We'll have to remove that from the inside, get that trim off, and attach it to the new grill. And the new grill has that trim I was talking about. Uh, you can see how it's got the little molded in area here, top and bottom for the emblem. And so does the, this original, which I assume. So that should make the emblem. Uh... When you turn the back to the back side of the Chevy grill, the emblem is held on by two 13 millimeter nuts. I'm gonna take those off. And the trim that's held on at the bottom of the grill is just, you just need a trim tool. These are just plastic. Uh, push pins. So we're going to pull all those out and apply them to the new grill. And now we're going to take a look at the emblem. And uh, I've cleaned it pretty good. Cleaned it, scrubbed off the back of it. Uh, cut some of the glue out. So obviously this is aftermarket. I think the whole front end's probably been replaced. Uh, 
one of the things that slowed me down on this are the details. The screws that hold in the headlights, uh, out of a total of eight, only four were the, of the originals. They were all rusty. Turn signals, uh, you saw that one was missing on one side. There's only two on each side. I was missing one on one side, only had a total of three. Um, the clips that hold the painted trim to the bottom of the grill, uh, those have to be replaced as well. So we're going to get on to the details in a little while. Again, I'll put all this information in the description below. But let's take care of the emblem. We're going to coat this in black. This is kind of a matte black. This is some 3M. It says Sizer, S-I-S-E-R. Sizer, 3M. And I'm going to very carefully trim this. And I just want to really take off enough. I want to stiff. Take off enough to do the emblem and not much more. So trim this. This side comes pretty tightly wound. So getting this to uh, flatten out, we may have to get our heat gun. In fact, we're gonna have to get that anyway because uh, laying this out on the on the emblem itself, the flat part isn't too bad. But when we're cutting it and trying to get it to fold over and fit into all the corners, we're going to use uh, our heat gun to help make this softer and fit into those uh, little crevices. Okay. We also want to make sure the emblem is perfectly clean so the adhesive will stick to it well. So we've got some denatured alcohol here. We'll wipe that down good, make sure it's free of all the junk that's been on it over the years. Get some dirt. It's had bugs on it and bug and tar remover, soap and everything else you can imagine. So just gonna wipe it good, doesn't take but a moment. Never done this before, so we'll learn this together. A nice thick material. It's interesting as I pull it apart. The back of it is kind of a, a matte finish, a textured finish. I'm going to start it since my emblem is slightly curved. I'm going to put it down at a slight angle too. Well, it's not absolutely perfect, but considering how much a new one or a replacement costs, I think it looks pretty good. Here's checking our new parts. New headlights, headlight screws, the turn signals, bulbs, and the screws. I got some extra ones there. For the side marker lenses, we wrapped our emblem. It looks pretty good. And we got new clips to go in at the turn signals. They say the devil's in the details. Boy, they're not kidding. I thought this would be very simple, but let's start with the headlights. This is the variety of screws that we're holding in my headlights. This is actually the original style screw. And out of all the screws, there were only three. Here's three of those. And the rest of these were, were used to hold in the other headlamp. Now looking at the two headlight rings, this is a factory original. This is not. This is aftermarket. It has a long slot. Factory originals don't. They have a direct hole. Trying to find the correct screws for this is kind of difficult. I did order some, but they're not exactly the same. They're quite similar. Uh, it's a little taller head on it, a little thicker, and a little. it's not as flat. 
but it is quite similar and it does uh, screw in exactly the same way same way as the uh, the original screws on the turn signal screws you know I was missing one and I was missing one and one of the other screws was the wrong screw there are only four on this truck because the the lens hooks in the side and has two screws here whereas the GMC has four screws all around these screws it's what it looks like um, if you try to find these in the aftermarket or just find them available for sale this screw through a company called classic classic auto parts I think it is that screw is twelve dollars and forty nine cents there's a stainless one that's three dollars and forty nine cents and there's one that's a little shorter and has a Torx bit and it's two dollars and forty nine cents I'm not paying that so I did find a couple of screws uh, actually, I took the extra screw out of the GMC for this, so I have four that match, and I wire wheeled them. Uh, the screws that hold the cowl venting at the base of your windshield looks almost identical and is a little bit shorter, which is plenty long, and that will work as well. They look just like them. And so the next time you go to the salvage yard, now you know what to look for. It's the nits and nats on these OBS trucks. There's a lot of stuff that's not available in the aftermarket, and you're going to need it, or it is available and it's expensive. Um, the little clips, these are the clips that hold the two screws behind the turn signal. And this, uh, behind the turn signal, and these mount into the, the front grill, these two spots right here, for the screw. Well, you can't hardly find these very easily, uh, especially in black. I found I only had three, so I purchased off of eBay a package of these little, little uh, nylon screw grommets. And they're a quarter inch hole, and you can get 25 of them for about 7 or $8. The lower painted trim that attaches to the bottom of the grill has eight attachment points and here's what was holding it on all of these all of these right here and they're all supposed to look like this one and yet there's four different kinds holding it on so we're getting new trim push pins as well so that that'll be right maybe you now you may be wondering why are you going to the trouble you won't ever see it True, I won't see it, but I know it's going to be done, and I want it to look right. I want it to be done right. I don't want it to be cobbled together like this one was. Uh, I believe the truck uh, at some point was hit because I can tell that fender is an aftermarket fender. The grill that was on it was aftermarket. The emblem, everything. So the front end's been replaced. All right, let's begin putting on all the pretty things and make it look like new. All right, there we are, trim installed. And there she is, the finished product. A little tedious having to deal with the screws and the clips and such, but I think the results look really nice. That's a really nice transformation. Uh, tell me what you think about the black bow tie emblem. I really like it. A little subtle, kind of hard to see actually, but it's uh, easier to see in real life than it is on this video, but it looks good. Really like that front end, it really makes the truck look updated and newer. 
Also, as I mentioned before, we've got under hood, I put a new under hood insulation pad in. Uh, this is made by a company called Rubber the Right Way. And so you get that little glare going there. And it is a really nice pad. It comes with all the clips made just right, snaps in place correctly. Uh, really helps under the hood look a lot cleaner and uh, nicer. Also, the same company produces a rubber trim that goes inside the wheel wells here. This is over your upper control arms. Passenger side has two pieces. And the driver's side just has one. And it's cut well, comes with the little attaching clips, snaps right in place, is a real easy to install. They're heavy duty and they look like they will last another 30 years. So really appreciate you hanging with us this far and watching the whole video. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.